In this Debaco University video, we're going to be looking at how to identify and control pythium or crown rot in cannabis plants. So we can see here it can affect them at the early stages and later in stages, so one to be mindful of as a grower. So because pythium can affect plants at early stages and later stages, it's important to be able to identify this and also to have a control idea because it's something growers should be scouting for through all stages of the plant cycle. So first off, identification is important, and there are several different pathogenic species that can cause disease in a wide host range. Pythium is a water mold, so it can travel to new host plants via water, and that can be irrigation water. Root rots and lower stem decay cause above ground symptoms such as marginal leaf scorch, stunting, poor plant vigor, and or inconsistent stands if you're looking down a long row. They can also produce oospores that can overwinter, which can be an issue if you're looking at planting in that same field the following year. Most notably causes root rots that can be field identified by pulling out the roots and then trying to strip the outer layer. So if this is your kind of your root area, you take your roots and try to strip off that outer layer. If it comes off really easy, that can be a sign you may have pythium. The above ground uh, seedlings can damp off, which is uh, common in propagation areas, and larger plants will express chlorosis of leaves. Once pythium infects hemp plants, there's really no cure, so being able to identify and know that you have it is important for making, out, for making ideas and plans for following years as far as probably not planting in that field or rotating out. So what's the general uh, life cycle of Pythium? Well, we can see here it is, uh, it is root-based. Uh, it can cause that kind of infection. We see that zoospores, oospores, as I said, swimming kind of in the water. Those zoospores, germination, attaches to the root, infects that portion, grows up in the plant, causes a blighted plant, causes a dead plant. When that plant dies, all those roots then have all those additional uh, spores or O o o oangium. Fertiliza fertilization occurs, causing it to spread, to directly germinate, to infect more, and really can cause this to spread quite quickly. So what are some common methods of spreading, as it does a pretty good job of it on its own, but soil substrate transfer, such as tools, containers, or even shoes, can transfer uh, pythium from one field to another. Contaminated water, contaminated irrigation water or runoff can also cause it to spread. Infected plants should be isolated, removed, tagged, and bagged um, to prevent any sort of spread to healthy neighboring plants. And then there's winter over inoculum uh, present from previously infected plants and also poor sanitation protocols, particularly if you're in an indoor growing operation. So how, how do you go about managing pythium or crown rot? Well, you we want to manage soil moisture in the root zone. Inspect any new plant material entering the growing area uh, for disease as well as insects. Ensure proper aeration of the substrate. Keep nitrogen at optimum but not excessive levels. And you want to avoid salt accumulation within the substrate. That'll cause uh, plant stress as well. Have sanitation protocols in place even if this is not identified. If you think your plants are clean, hopefully they are, that's great. Still implement those sanitation protocols so that if there's any small portion of pithing that tries to get started, your sanitation protocols should take care of that to eliminate the chance of you seeing that in your subsequent crop, particularly in those indoor locations.